Understanding Identity Formation Formation of identity is the personal development of an individual's distinctive enduring entity. Identity formation is too known as individuation, and the enduring entity is too known as personal continuity. Parts of a person's actual identity include a sense of affiliation, personal continuity, and uniqueness, and has to be established starting from infancy unto adult stages of life. Identity formation is an ongoing process, connecting the core of a chosen and established personality through self-shaping concepts. There are consistent factors that shape the distinctive parts some include, culture, disability, family, professional, relationships, religion, social, etc. The overall process defines and separates each individual to themselves. Certain individual characteristics can help form a reputation such as, conspicuous, dramatic, eminent, passive, prominent, or even trustworthy. In which a person is recognized or known for those particular actions, behavior, choices, experiences, or moments. Erickson's theory of psychosocial development explains that the identity versus role confusion stage begins as an adolescent trying to form a basic identity. Building occupational and social identities that will manifest throughout a person's lifetime. Throughout each person's lifetime, they experience different conflicts and crises. The experiences will arise at certain points in life and must be resolved to progress forward to the next eight stages. It will be complicated determining or keeping one's own identity intact. However, the crisis will get resolved with identity achievements. Understanding who they are as a unique person, accepting and rejecting others while estimating goals and values. Once an adolescent has attained identity achievements, they are ready to move forward to the next stage of intimacy versus isolation. Where they will sense companionship and form strong friendships with others. After that, if the identity versus role confusion crisis isn't solved, the adolescent will face confusion moving forward with plans and the role of an adult. Distortion to one's own identity can lead to distortion of forming a shared identity with others, and instability throughout adulthood. Self-concept known as self-identity is the sum of a human being's knowledge and understanding of oneself. And the self-concept is different from self-consciousness which is an awareness of oneself. These components include physical, psychological, and social attributes. Of which can influence a person's attitude, beliefs, habits, and ideas. And the attributes and components aren't general concepts of self-esteem or self-image. Identity is the condition or character as to who a person or what a thing is, the beliefs, qualities, etc., that distinguish or identify a person or thing. Influence is the action or process of producing effects on the actions, behavior, opinions, etc., of another or others. Practical Identity Types Business is an occupational, profession, or trade that involves the purchase and sale of goods in an attempt to make a profit. A person, partnership, or corporation engaging in commerce, manufacturing, or service. In a business a professional identity comes into being when there is a philosophy that is manifest in distinct corporate culture, giving it the corporate personality. To go into business sometimes require formal education and training. Business skills involve accounting, agreements, business cards, concepts, management, leadership, loyalty, organization, planning, specific benefits by role, strategies, task forwarding and these are just the basics. Culture is the quality in a person or society that arise from a concern for what is regarded as excellent in arts, letter, manners, scholarly pursuits, etc. Cultural identity gives a person a sense of belonging to a culture or group, that influences the individual identity just as historical and modern culture. While adhering to either group individuals may choose certain aspects to refine their cultural experience or ideas. Cognitive is the mental processes of judgment, memory, perception, and reasoning, as contrasted with emotional and volitional processes. The act or process of learning cognitive functioning will enable abstract and logical reasoning. Making it easier to observe and study possible identities. A person that has advanced cognitive development and maturity resolve identity issues significantly quicker than others. Leaving more time to cultivate their identity. An early established identity is highly recommended to form desired life goals. A collective is to form a group, combining individuals as a whole. Individuals dedicate their lives to the group over individual identity, they assume risks and defend the views of the group. The cohesiveness of the collection goes beyond the community. Cybersocializing is socializing using internet mediums like Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, etc. Cyber socializing is the production of conversations via internet mediums. For youth, the internet is becoming an expressional dimension based upon their contingency. That is designed to connect them with chosen types for interaction, which optimizes electronic social approval. There they can talk about the distinguishing characteristics of self and others. Disability is a lack of adequate mental or physical ability, power, strength, basically, legal incapacity. Disability individuals have global, local, and national cultural communities to help form identity. Ethnic pertains to the characteristic of people, especially an ethnic group sharing a common and distinctive culture, language, religion, and traditions of a country. 
in which common concepts are adapted through ancestry or genealogy. National is an independent political unit, that is maintained by a nation as an organized whole. It is an ethical and philosophical concept, in which all humans are divided into groups called nations. Usually, members of a nation share a common identity and origin such as ancestry, descent, names, or parentage. Ethnic and national groups' identities are crucial to a person's well-being. A family is any group of people that are closely related by blood, as aunts, children, cousins, and parents. A family can include adopted members. Through interaction, each has its influence on a person's identity. This is how a person learns the commitments and vows of relationships. The person also learns how to cope in their environment, from family showing their coping skills whether bad or good circumstances play a factor. And this is too how the person will deal with environmental issues whether fearfully, immorally, or moralistically, optimistically, etc. Gender is either a male or female division of a species, especially as differentiated by behavior and roles, cultural and social. This is based and classified on the individual's awareness or identity. However, gender identity may affect a person in a variety of social structures, family, employment, ethnic group, religion, or irreligion. Interaction is reciprocal action, effect, or influence. The direct effect that one person has on another, particularly in asserting or causing the influence of one person by another. Interpersonal pertain to the relations between persons, existing or occurring. Social relations form the basis of concepts such as movements, organizations, structures, and systems. In a sociological hierarchy, social relations deal with social questions or problems, especially focusing on cultural and environmental factors rather than on psychological or personal characteristics. Society is comprised of two or more people, that are socially organized forming a multitude of social interactions, and regulated by social norms with each having a social position and role. The development of interpersonal identity occurs during exploratory self-analysis and evaluation, and ending with an established, consolidated, and understandable sense of identity for oneself. However, the actions and thoughts of others can create social influences that can change a person. Character assassination or categorization, labeling others, with comparison to, others' prominence, being a supporting factor does occur in societal environments. You see this immensely in corporate jobs, politics, reality TV, or everywhere a person can dominate. While one person may dominate another with less education or financial independence. Someone else may distort another person's character for financial gains or one's benefit. Someone may even associate another with a certain group due to their actions or behavior. This is a form of peer pressure, but the person can either result in negative actions and behavior or face fears. And sure, someone's behavior shouldn't define you, if the behavior doesn't justify your actions. Character assassination isn't necessarily done by a sane individual, but there is a choice being made. According to our culture, there has to be a hierarchy to base the ability of success upon, otherwise, there wouldn't be a higher expectation for future goals. This is a moral standard any person ought to strive to reach higher expectations. And generally, anyone can choose not to assassinate another person's character. Be aware but don't let imbalanced energy in social environments hinder moving forward with identity development. Interpersonal skills give a person the ability to examine and question personal elements such as behaviors, beliefs, and ideas. To have skills is to do something well, but it does require aptitude, knowledge, practice, etc. Parenting is the role a father and mother play to their children, they are there to protect and nurture the children that they bear or rear. They are an origin and source of a caretaker or guardian. Boys' and girls' identity formation is significantly influenced by parental involvement in the areas such as support, school, and social monitoring. The secure a relationship a child has with their parents, the more likely they will explore identity options and find freedom. Otherwise, when the relationship isn't as close a child tends to fear rejection from parents and others. Making them feel less confident in forming an identity separate from their parents. A peer is a person who is equal to another in abilities, age, background, qualifications, and social status. Conversation between close peers helps to further their identity formation. Engaging in conversation helps to be able to joke about touchy subjects, and offer advice while providing support. Those who have similar experiences can encourage those who can't relate to certain relationship problem areas. Professional is to follow an occupation as a means of livelihood or for gain, and one has to acquire to be taught a profession. Professional identity connects the identification of a person with a profession, exhibited by ethical standards as accepted by the profession, that will include an alignment of roles, responsibilities, and values. Religious is a member of a religious order, the congregation presented with vows of faith for scrupulous conscientiousness. The term religious identity refers to personal practices of communal faith and rituals to communication stemming from such conviction. Of which too includes faith and mystic experiences. A religious identity begins with the parents' religious association and their contacts, enabling the person to choose a religious identity. 
it involves adherence to a set of codified beliefs, practices, rituals, and studies, of ancestral and cultural, history, mythology, traditions, and writings. Scholastic refers to education, schools, and scholars, they are important for the brain as well as the identity. People that have post-secondary education tend to set concrete goals, keep commitments, and acquire a stable occupation. In the process of identity formation, the person will be getting educated on different approaches and paths to take. College or technical college, academics, arts, etc., can be beneficial to personal freedom. Sociocultural signifies the combination or interaction of cultural and social elements. In the past children would adapt to religious beliefs etc., that was intended by their parents. Nowadays the youth have more resources to explore commitments and identity choices, making sociocultural influence less popular and insignificant. Through social support, a person can gain group and social identity by affiliation, and it may require membership in various groups. Group categories are most effective, dating, education, ethnicity, family, friendship, occupational, and religion. Identity Disorder Factors Distorted identity is the act or process of deforming a person's identity, opposed to forming a person's identity, disturbance, and theft or both play a role. To distort is to give disproportionate, false, or perverted facts about a person, place, or thing. Giving distorted facts about something decreases the value of that something. While some researchers believe that identity disturbance is a lack of consistent goals, values, relationships, and worldviews, it leads to a sense of emptiness and creates a negative effect that is hard to regulate, due to lack of evidence or supporting details about the third variable. The third variable details would better explain why the identity disturbance took place rather than analyzing the sense of emptiness. Identity theft. This type of theft is the act of stealing wrongfully, and carrying or taking personal goods or property of another, basically, with the intent of grand theft or larceny. Depending on the state and severity of the crime, identity theft can be charged as either a felony or misdemeanor and additional restitution can be part of the punishment. Nowadays the statistics for identity theft are very high. Identity theft types include children, criminals, financial, seniors, and SSN. And children and seniors are in the highest risk age groups when it comes to scams. Synthetic ID theft. Synthetic identities are fake identities that combine fake information with actual data. Such as real credit cards, driver's licenses, or social security numbers, combined with a fake address. All of which are often used by organized crime to access goods and services when in fact to participate in money laundering. Children's identity is a major problem because it is very difficult to report, in most instances, the people are clueless that have been victimized until years after the fact. Child identity fraud or theft will affect 25% of kids before turning 18. Identity fraud. This type of fraud is the use by one person of another person's personal information, without authorization, to commit a crime or to deceive or defraud that other person or a third person. In the US an estimated 15 million residents have their identities used fraudulently each year and the financial losses can total anywhere from $50 billion to $70 billion, with the increasing rates of identity theft. And anyone can become a victim of identity theft, using trickery tools, thieves have access to others' personal information and are obtaining it in various ways. Making identity theft the most costly, frequent, and pervasive crime in the US. Thefts can include break-ins, drive-bys of stealing mail, phishing, and Ponzi schemes, hacks of corporate and government databases, hijacking of purses and wallets, identity fraud, robbery, etc. Vulnerable attacks fall on every business and individual's backs making corporate and personal information more susceptible to organized crime. The Identity Theft Resource Center, ITRC, 2016 data breach report of 1,579 in which 179 million records were exposed, had increased 44% of data breach and increased 389% of records exposure by 2017. The IRTC also reported credit card numbers exposure that totaled 14.2 million, this represents an 88% increase from 2016. Reported social security numbers exposure in 2017 was 158 million, and the number had increased at least eight times that from 2016. 31.7% of breach victims of 2016 later experienced identity fraud. According to the Federal Trade Commission, FTC, Consumer Sentinel Network Report, identity theft accounted for 13.9% of all consumer complaints in 2017. Experian is alerted each year about 25,000 to 30,000 fraud cases and during 2017 approximately 17% were targeted at children. Just based on Experian alone, a survey taken in August 2017 in which 73% of Americans were worried about their personal information being stolen, an increase of 4% from a similar survey taken in 2015. Many consumers lose money via wire transfer, they reported that the initial contact was made by telephone, and fewer complaints were the result of email or mail. 
Other fraud reports included employment or tax related totaling 82,051, phone or utilities totaling 55,045, banking totaling 50,517, lease or loan totaling 30,034, and benefits or documents totaling 25,849. Known as the most common form of identity theft in 2017, with there being 133,015 reports, credit card fraud had increased 23% from 2016. According to the 2017 statistics, consumers reported $905 million in total fraud losses. A 21.6% increase from 2016 with the median average loss being $429. Identity theft victims are more likely to experience identity fraud when there is an increase in data breaches. There were an estimated 13,852 child identity complaints affecting ages 19 and under, this represented 3.89% of all identity theft complaints in 2017, a slight decrease from 2016. For senior identity theft and scams, 35% of fraud complaints were reported, which impacted 18.9% of Americans age 60 and older. Statistics showed that Michigan was the highest state per capita of reported identity theft complaints. California, Florida, Maryland, and Nevada were included in the top five states of identity theft complaints according to the FTC. The number of fraud-related complaints in 2017 was an estimated 1.1 million, and Florida was the highest state per capita rate reported, followed by Georgia and Nevada. According to fraud complaints, consumers reported paying over $744 million with the median average amount being $450. Emotional Statistics of Identity Theft According to the Identity Theft Resource Center's study, 27% of identity theft complainants reported they had contacted law enforcement about the theft, and 87% indicated that a report was taken. The loss of data and personal information to identity theft can take up a lot of money and time, which can bring on emotional distress for victims. The aftermath statistics showed that 26% of respondents had to borrow money from families. While 22% had to take time off work, 15.3% of respondents sold possessions to pay for expenses that were caused by their identity theft, and 6.7% obtained a payday loan. Victims often feel annoyed, having to deal with the impact of identity theft. There are anxiety and financial problems that come with the loss of data and personal information. The aftermath statistics of an emotional impact showed that 66% of respondents experienced fear related to their personal and financial security. While 53% felt a sense of helplessness or powerlessness, 7% reported feeling suicidal. Although 75% of identity theft victims reported feeling severely distressed by the misuse of their personal information, 25% of respondents said they had sought professional help either through therapy, group therapy, or other types of support. If you often feel distraught and are contemplating suicide, it is highly recommended that you call the NSPL at 1-800-273-8255. Victims of Identity Theft Often it takes up to three months, or even three years for victims to find out that they have been victimized by identity theft. Having said that, it is highly recommended to monitor your accounts and reviewing personal information to stay on top of potential threats. Also, you can get identity protection to help protect yourself and your family. If you are a victim you can call the Identity Theft Hotline at 1-877-438-4338. Dissociative Identity Disorder, DID, is referred to as Multiple Personality Disorder. DID was not a diagnosis until DSM-4 which was published in 1994. Then it was called Multiple Personality Disorder, and the name was changed to reflect a better understanding of the condition. Giving acknowledgement for did characterization by fragmentation or splintering of identity, rather than by growth or proliferation of separate identities. Did is a severe condition whereas two or more distinct personality states are present. In which they take control of the person, alternating back and forth between actions, behavior, circumstances, and outcomes. The person also experiences extensive memory loss but not the same as ordinary forgetfulness. Half of the people with DID went from reporting having had two or three personality identities and over time that has increased to 16 or more. The primary personality often has the patient's actual name but tends to be dependent, depressed, guilty, and passive. The other personalities being more active, aggressive, and hostile often containing a current timeline that avoids or lacks childhood memory. Most of the personalities are ordinary people and animal parts, celebrity, fictional and mythical have been reported. These states alternately show in a person's behavior, and all this is the reason why some people described it as an experience of possession. Possession form of did can be distinguished from culturally accepted possession states in that the former is distressing, involuntary, and uncontrollable. Often persistence or reoccurrence involves conflict between the individual and his or her surrounding family, social, or work surroundings, and is manifested often in places that violate norms of the culture or religion. The associated conditions sometimes include borderline, depression, post-traumatic stress, 
substance misuse disorders along anxiety and self-harm. According to statistics, it affects about 2% of the general population in Europe and North America 3% of those admitted to the hospital with mental health problems. DID is diagnosed in females six times more often than males. In about 90% of cases, people with this rare condition are often victims of severe abuse, in general, childhood trauma. Other cases are linked to health problems during childhood or experiences of war. While genetics does play a role, people who are diagnosed with it report more historical psychological trauma than those diagnosed with any other mental illness. And being diagnosed with 5 to 7 comorbid disorders on average is much higher than other mental illnesses. This rarely reported disorder has become controversial and more common. Controversy surrounded within both the legal system and psychiatry. In court cases, it has helped some people plead the insanity defense. While extremes of stress, specific relationships between childhood abuse, disorganized attachment, and lack of social support are components of DID. Another explanation was suggested, which includes the lack of childhood nurturing resulting in an insufficient ability to dissociate experiences and memories from consciousness. The fact it is the result of childhood trauma has long increased acknowledgement of the diagnosis among healthcare providers, validating the idea that child abuse has lifelong, serious effects. There are several theories regarding dissociation. Psychiatrist Paulette Gillig describes a distinction between an ego state, behaviors and experiences possessing permeable boundaries with other such states, but united by a common sense of self. The ego state alters, each separate autobiographical memory, independently leading with a sense of ownership over the individual's behavior, commonly used in discussions of did. Ellert Nijenhuis and colleagues describe a distinction between personalities that assume responsibility for day-to-day -day functioning, which is, associated with blunted physiological responses and reduced emotional reactivity, referred to as the apparently normal part of the personality or ANP. Those emerging in survival situations, involving fight-or-flight responses, painful emotions, vivid traumatic memories, referred to as the emotional part of the personality or EP. Structural dissociation of the personality described by Otto van der Hart and colleagues, their attribute to pathological or traumatic causes is divided into primary, secondary, and tertiary. According to this theory, the primary dissociation involves one of each ANP and EP, while the secondary dissociation involves one ANP along with two EPS. The tertiary dissociation is unique to DIT and is described as having two of each ANP and EPS. Others have suggested dissociation can be separated into two distinct forms, compartmentalization or detachment. The latter does involve a failure to control normal controllable actions or processes, which is most evident in DID. Efforts to psychometrically distinguish between normal and pathological dissociation have been made, but they have not been universally accepted.